Hello. Hi. All right. Well, I don't know. I almost feel like we have to just dive right in. Yes. Of course. This is Reference Roundtable. It's Thursday. It's 3.30. We're here to talk about stuff, but today we don't know what we're going to talk about. Sarah is gone, as you can see. It's just myself, Lacey, and Michael, and she left us this. I'm kind of nervous. I don't, we don't, we have not opened it. Show them no. the seal. It's still sealed. It's been taped. <laughs> I wanted to open it. She gave it to me last week and I really wanted to open it, but I did not. So now is the time. Are you ready? We don't know what's inside, but whatever <laughs> it is, that's what today's episode is about. That's what we're going to be talking about. So Let's if you don't see. like it, you can blame Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm just going to destroy the envelope oh, no. here. What is it? All right. Ooh, I got a paper with some stuff oh, I in it. it was cash for a second. Oh, the paper is empty. It's just folded up, but within it, it has some adorable little wow. cards. So, and of course, they're really cute. Very because Sarah. it's Sarah, and she's just the most creative person ever. But I think they're questions about just all kinds of stuff. Do so, you want... should we get started? Yeah. Why don't you start with the first one? Okay. I'm going to read it, show it to the camera in case anybody watching wants to answer in the comments. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. What books are you most looking forward to reading this summer? Hmm. Well, me, I, I, when it's summer, I'm all about like fun reads. And so I've been reading like, like right now I'm reading Death in the Clouds, which is an Agatha Christie mystery. So I'm all about like the, like comfy, happy, like easy reading. That's really what I'm all about. See, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I really want to read that new book. I think it's, I'm reading the Pope and Mussolini right now, but his sequel, The Pope at War came out. So it's like all this like- That's the opposite of yeah. light, light reading. <laughs> no, it's like I, histo history, <laughs> Mussolini. It sounds really interesting. Fascism, though. Italy. It, really interesting. it is really interesting. All right. What Next the one. Name is, but. <laughs> what is your favorite ride at a carnival or amusement park? Hmm. I mean, I love roller coasters. I've ridden a lot of roller coasters in my day, like pretty much any roller coaster. I don't love the like wooden ones that are really rickety crickety, and uh, you have to go to a chiropractor afterwards. But I'm a roller coaster person. I have person. tilt a whirl. Ugh, I, tilt -whirl is really I fun. love me a tilt a whirl. That like hands down. I have fond no memories contest. like grade school being on a tilt world with my friends like singing. Yep. It's like <laughs> it's a very communal experience, mm -hmm. the tilt world. And you can control so. the intensity. Yep. It's a good one. <laughs> I like these questions. Good job so far. I know we're only two in, but good job so far, Sarah. <laughs> what movie has the best soundtrack? Oh I have an answer. I have an answer. You wanna go first? Okay. Forrest Gump. It has like Every decade, all of like the big hits. I'm a big fan. Oh, but also I have two favorites. Drive. Oh, that one's um, really good. It, I don't remember when it came out. It came out in the last ten years, but it's a uh, called Drive, and it Is stars it Ryan Gosling. I'm that pretty came sure out when it I was came... in high school. I'm pretty sure. I well, of the last eleven, I'm pretty sure it came out since I lived here. So I've lived here for about eleven years. So. It's a good one. Anyway, That's a great soundtrack. It's, it's got a good soundtrack and it's a good movie. My <laughs> answer would be Baz Luhrmann's Great Gatsby. Oh, okay. That soundtrack good. is so good and it makes me excited because the his Great Gatsby movie was the last Baz Luhrmann movie, I think. And I know that one's about 10 years old, so it's been a while and we're getting Elvis. I was going to say he's got the Elvis movie coming and out. so I'm expecting that soundtrack to be really good. And too. we have someone else who wanted to share their favorite. Ooh. Harriet likes to ride the carousel, and you can't go wrong. That's a classic. But I'm very particular about what animal I get on a carousel. What What is that? It has to be, I don't, if it has options besides horses, I want to get on something, like, more exciting. Like the Henry Dorley Zoo carousel. Oh. oh I would be so particular. So you know as horses. Kid. Yeah. What about I, a unicorn? I like horses. A unicorn is a horse. Okay. I'm with you there. But, like, I would always try to get on, like, but the tiger didn't move on the Henry Dorley Zoo carousel, oh. so that was a trade-off. And it's no, I've I've accidentally gotten on like a horse or whatever that didn't move, and you're so disappointed the whole time. You're just like, this yeah. was a mistake. Oh, we got another one. You have uh, a friend to ride the roller coasters <laughs> with. 
Dagma says, roller coasters anytime, but nothing that goes round and round. So no tilt a whirl, I guess, for, <laughs> fair, <laughs> for <fair>. you. <laughs> All right. Is it my turn, Marie? I think so, yes. All right. What book have you recommended the most? Ooh, Gentlemen of Moscow by Amor Tolls. I I even told my um, doctor to read it. So that's I, definitely. <laughs> and I, I, I'm the only person I know who has like not finished that book. I got yeah. like 50 pages in and I, I wasn't clicking. Everyone loves me. it except for you. Everyone <laughs> loves it. Like my grandma just was reading it and was just obsessed with it. And I was like, oh, I need to retry this book because it has everything that I think I would like. I think it's because I was reading it when I was in grad school. So yeah. I was like, maybe try it like when you, you know, no, when you're in a different super, mood. <laughs> exactly. Um, I feel like for me, it's probably like 1491 by Charles Mann or um, mm. Five Days at Memorial, which Jennifer Haplick at the library did for mm -hmm. one of her check it outs once. So those, I, I, I recommend a lot of nonfiction. You, I, I'm kind of I think, I almost think nonfiction is like easier to recommend, right. just because I think people have really strong opinions about novels, but they're a little mm -hmm. more open minded when it comes to like, I want to learn about this, or I don't right. mind, you know, hearing more about this guy or whatever. You can kind so. of tell if you're going to enjoy it yeah. based on the subject matter sometimes. Um, oh, and say nothing by Patrick Rabin Keefe. That's I that is on my list. That's, that's like so on my list to read. So when I get there, I'm I'm sure I'm going to like it. I'll get some more comments. Uh, Harriet uh, recommends uh, Ooh, Cast by Isabella Wilkerson. That's definitely a popular one yeah, at the library. Yeah, no, my, my mom and grandpa both like really enjoy Isabella Wilkerson's books. She's just a great nonfiction author too. Mm -hmm. And Camille, my mom, <laughs> says she loved The Gentleman of Moscow so good, but read his other one not as good. I've, I've heard that from a lot of people. We kind of badgered my mom into reading it. Both my husband and the I were highway. like, you have to read Gentleman of Moscow. Uh, we both were like, you have to read it. You have to read it. <laughs> so. Ooh, and Anne is some reading Mammals and Murder. Oh, good. I hope you got that <laughs> Rise of the Mammals book. That's the one I we had a, in a, it came from the book drop. I think that was last yes. week. Mm -hmm. There's something about summer that, that makes me love a good murder. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> All right. When was the last time you purchased a music CD and what was it? Oh my gosh. Um, I know since I've lived here, but it was like, I think it was even before I worked at the library. So at least 10, 10 years ago, but I bought a Muse CD. They're an English rock band. Um, I don't even remember what it was called. It, it was, it was, anyway, it was a Muse CD and it came out 10 years ago and it was like black and it had like really bright colored squiggly mm. lines on the front. And I feel really bad for not remembering, but I just have not. Bought some <laughs> really well, time. I only bought CD, I, I, CDs to me are like something I keep in my car. And so when I, the entire time I was in New York City, I was not buying CDs because right. I didn't have a car to put them in. So I think the last CD I purchased was back when I was living in Minneapolis and it was Lady Gaga's joanne album that's the last cd I that remember was a while ago right it's been a minute <laughs> i buy vinyl records because i can play those in my living room yes i buy those a lot yeah. we have quite a collection me and my husband but yeah and those are fun to collect anyway give it 20 years and we'll all be buying cds oh, again I'm they'll, sure. be, <laughs> they'll be nostalgic once more <laughs> all right ooh, ooh, ooh. this is mm. would you rather give up your phone for a month or bathing for a week. My phone. So no phone for a month, bathing for a week. My phone. I'm 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 kind of with you there. I like I have to bathe. I could not come to work and not have like showered. <laughs> like if I didn't bathe for a week, people would just deal with it. I think I could get away with a week of it before people would be like concerned maybe <laughs> depends on like what kind of activities right. i'm doing what time of year it is 95 like, degrees right like it is today. <laughs> um but honestly like when i'm home i love to just put my phone in a different room and forget about mm -hmm. it like if i didn't have to have a phone i wouldn't have a phone. well and like especially for us like 
we're on our computer every day at work. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you really needed to like check your email, like it's not a big deal. So yeah. I, I definitely get plenty of internet time. <laughs> I like to be clean too. Oh my gosh. It's just, it makes you happier when you're <laughs> clean. <laughs> and it looks like Anne last purchase a Stevie Ray Vaughan double trouble CD. Double good, trouble. Very, very good I taste it was a there. Double CD. I hope it was. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Has the ending of a book ever made you angry? Hmm. I feel like yes. But I I, I'm trying to remember why. I have an answer. And it's weird because I also, this is like, I was just saying I recommend a lot of nonfiction, but one of my fiction recommendations, and I still recommend this book, I think it's a great book, is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I think that's her full name. Um, it's a wonderful book. Everyone should read Americana. It's great. But, <laughs> but you'll have to let me know what you think of the ending. I actually I actually do have one because Sarah and I share it. Um, we both read, uh, read Malibu Rising uh, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And she she's written quite a few books. Mm -hmm. um, like Daisy Jones. Yes. Um, lots of great books. But And this was a great story. And I loved the premise. But the ending... Like I wanted to throw the book in the river <laughs> after lighting it on fire. I just hated the ending. So good book, bad ending. And now I don't recommend that book because I just it ruined it for me. Yeah. I've heard <laughs> that from a few people. <laughs> Ooh, we got all kinds of kinds of comments here. <laughs> bye bye telephone. <laughs> I'm with you. We Anne. approve. We <laughs> approve. Camille says, I'm with you, Michael. I sometimes don't look at my phone for hours. So good. I everyone's on the goodbye phone uh, a train here. I don't think as human beings that we are like biologically wired to be available 24 mm seven. -hmm. No, like no. you need to unplug at least for a couple hours a day. It's not good for you to be so like accessible. Yeah, exactly. Take a break for yourself. <laughs> All right. I think it's, was it my turn? Yeah, you're usually the yellow ones. I'm noticing a color oh color, yeah which sarah oh, probably didn't... planned for. i'm sure she did she's <laughs> she's wonderful <laughs> what is one thing you wish more people knew about the library uh i think a lot of people know this already but it is so frustrating as a librarian to watch people spend their good hard-earned money on services like audible when they're paying to access ebooks and e audiobooks, when they can just Especially get audio it for books. free, audiobooks are expensive. Like, do you want to go out and like buy one at Barnes and Noble or something like that? They're like sixty bucks, right? And just, <laughs> I think Amazon's like Audible's Amazon, right? Like, there's yeah. there's yeah. like marketing titans behind these services, so they make it seem like such a good deal. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have access to a library, perhaps it is. But if you have access to your public library, you're paying for something you could get for free. Yes, that's a big one. I'm trying to think of something different. I mean, just the amount of um, other kind of like online resources kind of right. things that we have. We have a, a database called EBSCO, which doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's just a big corporation. But um, it allows our patrons to have access to all kinds of like magazines and things like mm -hmm. that. Um just so much stuff like I think you can read like the last like 30 years of consumer reports on there which a lot of people like to read because you know you're buying a washer or a new car or something like that I mean we just have so many things that are like that it's that a lot of people resource. don't know about so. I feel like EBSCO got me through college grad school all that mm -hmm. and it, but it wasn't until grad school that I realized you can have EBSCO cite your sources like when you're making MLA, ALA yep. citations. So this is for any students watching this. If you're using <laughs> EBSCO, you can narrow it down, get those peer-reviewed sources that your teacher's going to want, and EBSCO will format your citations for you. So. Oh, I have to share one more thing because I just have to. Um, there's also something that the library has that you get for free with your library card called Transparent Languages. And it has um, over, I don't remember how many, but it's over 100 languages I mean, all the big ones, you know, French, Spanish, German, Chinese, Japanese, but they also have some really awesome ones that you'd never think of. They have quite a few um, native and aboriginal languages wow. on there that aren't even spoken by, you know, millions of people anymore. You know, they might be a really small tribe now. So 
And it, they that's available too as a free app, kind of like Libby, cool. where you can download the app and just log in and learn whenever you want to. Kind of like Duolingo. Yeah. Except it's free. I need to download that app. <laughs> yeah. You know, unlike Rosetta Stone, which is like 100, 200 bucks to, to get one language, you can have so many languages. So I love that one. All right. <laughs> I could talk a lot about all that stuff, but we'll move on. Uh, Anne says, I wish more people knew how helpful you are all, all are, which is incredibly sweet. You're very sweet, Anne. <laughs> we love having uh, people like you <laughs> come and visit us. What was the first concert you ever attended? Oh my gosh. So the last CD Sorry, I man. bought was a Lady Gaga CD. The first concert I ever went to was oh. a Lady Gaga concert. First concert I went to was the Monster Ball. So it was like nice. probably like the best Lady Gaga concert to go to. And there was like fake blood, giant <laughs> monster fish. And I got, I was right up in the front, like close enough that I could like, Oh wow! Like reach out and touch her if I wanted to, and I I could hear her singing without the microphone. It That's was really awesome. cool. I've been to so many concerts in my life, and I'm not like most of them have been like you know I went to a lot of concerts like in high school of like no name bands. Um, so I'm really struggling. Like, What's like the first one that like you have like a core memory of? I don't know. <laughs> what's the what's the best concert you've ever been to? Um, oh, well, hands, I saw Dolly Parton a few years ago. Uh, she was at the Sanford Center in Sioux Falls, and my life was changed. She's and just a treasure. You've seen Cher twice, no? Oh, yes, I have seen Cher twice. That's really something. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Cher once, and I would happily go see Cher. Again. Yeah, I, I got... I saw her and then I got my family to come with me the second time. And they were, they were all like, they didn't like dislike Cher, but they were ambivalent. They all left and they were like, she's the greatest. Her live show is so fun. I even like, yeah. I wanted to buy my parents tickets. Yep. It's like, it's like, a, it's weirdly a show you could go to with your whole family. Yep. I don't it's know. It's like, it's something for everybody. Mm, really. Very something for everybody. <laughs> Ooh. Joe says Phil Collins. That is a Ooh. solid first concert. Yeah. I really hope he played uh, in the air tonight. Got Lady Gaga, <laughs> Dolly Parton, Cher, and Phil Collins. Some good names. We're hitting the big ones. Ooh, okay, this one's going to be... This is shady. <laughs> What's the first oh, no. thing that you ever learned to cook? Um, I'll let y'all know. Like When it know? happens. Oh, I, I mean, you could probably even say like ramen. Pasta? <laughs> I made a meatloaf once. It turned out fine. Well, there you meatloaf then. I mean, uh, yeah. if you didn't kill anybody and it tasted tolerable, that's I, a win. It was just like, it was my mother's meatloaf recipe. I made it with her. She showed me how, went back to my place, did the same thing. It tasted fine, but it wasn't my mother's meatloaf. Right. I mean, I like, I would say like scrambled eggs, you know, I mean, I know that's not really like, a, like a meal, mm. but like, I remember scrambling a lot of eggs when I was like 14, because I could make it myself and it was protein. I used to make fried <laughs> rice. Look at, see, you're, you're far more of a gourmet than you I'm a microwave that. chef. <laughs> yeah. I, I am finally like actually making like full meals now and I'm like ready, so, you know. I'm I'm also a slow learner, but I'm getting there. Mm. <laughs> I'm All impatient. Right. That's my problem. But. I get. I understand that. All right, got the next one. Would you rather be able to speak any language or talk to animals? Speak any language. I don't want to hear what animals have to say. Think of all the cursed animals you would have to hear. You mosquitoes, like spiders. spiders, snakes, toads. But like. I'm, I'm with you until I think about my cat. I have a cat and he's basically my child. And I'm like, but then he could like tell me like what he wanted or if he didn't feel good. So like if I didn't have a pet, it'd but be, is, it'd be the language thing. This is messed up. What if he told you he doesn't like you? I'd probably still love him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like my child. So I can't, uh, I any can't language. Really. You can make so much money. I, I know. It's, that's I mean, talk I'm to saying. animals. It's you really can make hard. money too. If you let people that's, know. That's a TV show. <laughs> yeah, really. Like the wild thornberries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't want to hear what animals have to say. I don't. All right. It. Well, we're split on that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many answers to this one. <laughs> What's one book that you will never, in all caps, read? What is one book you will mm. never, ever read? I have answers that I don't want to oh, say. Oh, this is camera. funny because it is one of our summer reading books. Mm -hmm. But The Only Good Indian by Stephen Graham Jones. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a co-worker uh, here, Brenda. She works in Youth Services Reddit. And I was like, oh, yeah, I heard about that. And she was like telling me all about it. And I said, never, never, it's never. Um, I mean, it sounds like a great book. Like, I think it's well written and a lot of people will enjoy it. But like, she told me what happens in it. And I was like, that's it's for horror. me. <laughs> it's a scary yeah, book. It's a scary book. So, I mean, it's supposed to leave you kind of. Oh. It's the most <laughs> like checked out and read summer reading book so far out of all the 12 on the list. It's good so, for it. Yeah. He's a great author. I just can't. No, I totally I can't do that. I understand. I'm thinking of an answer that I want to like say on the record on camera. Do you want me to like read some comments? Read some think comments. About it? We have ooh tuna noodle casserole for my Girl Scout leader. Harriet says um, that is a great first thing to cook. I love that it was a casserole. That's that's a very Midwestern answer too. <laughs> All right, and Joe says cats are the best. I would like to hear from them. See, I'm a big cat person, so I'd be talking to. All the, everyone's cats all the time. I probably have no human friends left, just cat friends. All right. I mean, there's like, I'm, there's, I'm, there's, there's, there's a lot of answers. I'm there. thinking maybe some of like those Richard Powers self help books or like oh, Rich yeah. Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. There's some like really. Yes. There's some self help out there that's very popular, and I'm not trying to yuck anybody's yum. But I get it's not for you. It's not for me. It's not for you. I get that. I'm I'm definitely in that category. I'm those don't call to me. I would never read those. So. Right. But you, you know. They consistently check out. Yeah, there must so. be something to them, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got another book question here. Has the ending of a book ever made you cry? Yeah. <laughs> the final Animorphs book. I've never read the Animorphs. I read most of the Animorphs. And I remember <laughs> I read the final Animorphs book and I was sobbing in my bed. And my mom had to like come in and like oh, pat my no. pack. The final Animorphs book was devastating. Um, so mine is a lot more like traditional okay. <laughs> uh, of mice and men. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> I have... that one, that one got to me. Yeah. I was like upset, but like also angry. So <laughs> Was very upset by that. <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of saw it coming. I had a weird experience once with mice and men. I gotta say a story. You know when you give blood and then afterwards you have to sit in the waiting area and they have snacks and stuff just to make sure you don't pass out. And there's usually an attendant there. One time in high school, I gave blood and I was in the snack area and the attendant was a very large man wearing overalls and like. A country Did he type remind hat. you of George? He reminded me of George. Not just of <laughs> that, but then he went, do you want to see my rabbit? And opened his hand <gasps> and he is, had a little rabbit. That is very of mice and men. And to this day, I don't know like if he was cosplaying George from a mice and men <laughs> or if I just met George from mice and men. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> you, are, you are not alone. It, it, I don't want to spoil it because I feel like we're having a very like 90s Y2K revival and maybe the Animorph <laughs> series will be reprinted and republished. You can, you can tell me off camera because I will not read the devastating. Animorphs books. <laughs> like if you think Harry Potter was devastating at certain parts, <laughs> read the Animorphs books. Oh. The final Animorphs book took me out. All right. We're getting to the bottom of our list here. So, What Last was your minute. favorite part about summer as a kid? Staying outside late. That's that's it. I liked being able to stay out late, and it was dark, and I'd still play with my friends. That was it. Sleeping in, I hate. I, <laughs> I am not a morning person. I don't know if I ever will be. Every day, waking up is a trauma, <laughs> and so summer meant that I like could just sleep. Ooh, well, Joe beats us swimming in the ocean. I did not get to swim in the ocean. I, I swam the in the ocean. Red River one time. Don't recommend. <laughs> Sharks, barracudas, sea snakes. <laughs> All right. What's the best vacation you've ever been on? Why should show it? 
a few really good vacations going to the uk like hands down but also like i also like um rocky mountain national park do in we, colorado would we consider like studying abroad for a summer of vacation why not my like study abroad <laughs> experience i lived in berlin for a month and paris for a month I got like the grand European experience. That would be on top of my list. That too, so. like, was pretty great. I New Orleans as well. I am going to go there someday. You'll I think I it. would really like it. I think you would too. I really want a beignet ever since uh, I found out th that they existed. Better than I thought it would be because <laughs> I had very low expectations. I was like, oh, this is actually really good. And I ate a plate of them. <laughs> Um, and if you haven't been, you have to go on the graveyard tour and see Nicolas Cage's pyramid tomb. He has a, he has a, he's built a tomb for himself. It's a pyramid. That's wild. Inspired by That's national treasure. Very Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh, well, Camille here. As a kid, I would go to the library and get tons of books. I would read until 1 or 2 a.m. and sleep until noon. Yeah. That is the life. <laughs> I did used to have, like, a stack. I liked the, um, if anyone out there has read, like, the R.L. Stein Fear Street series. Mm -hmm. It was, like, goosebumps, but for older kids. Like, it, they yeah. were actually kind of, like, scary, gruesome, poor. I never read those, but I do I would just, reading. like, check out stacks of them at the library and just read a pile of them in a day. Um, All right. Final question. If a movie was made about you, who, oh, sorry. If only I could read. <laughs> if a movie was made about your life, who would play you? Uh, oh my gosh. I have no idea. So <laughs> she was the last CD I bought, the first concert I went to. <laughs> and she's, me? and she, no, 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 no. <laughs> for me, I mean, I think. <laughs> Lady Gaga I, I could see that. in prosthetic makeup. I could see Lady that. Lady Gaga in drag. Let's keep with the theme. I could see that. She's an She's, actress extraordinary. She's a little wig. I yeah. Think, I could see I that. I think she could do the I voice work. I genuinely do not know who would play me. Probably like Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Oscar nominee. <laughs> I'm really like just trying to like somebody who like kind of even remotely looks like me, but. A good answer to this question is always Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> I think she's got the right attitude. Yeah. She's got the attitude. They'll have a lot in common. <laughs> uh, both fantastic singers. Both obviously. from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of these top secret questions that I mean. She, she left us some good questions. Like, what care it's like her spirit was here even yeah though she's, I, I felt she's out presence. on vacation so we're so thank you sarah yeah <laughs> i knew it would be amazing yeah it, it had to i be. mean even the envelope was amazing so show it again <laughs> we gotta show it one more time. do you know how nervous this made me at first i was like oh god it's gonna be like a challenge a scavenger hunt oh camille Ooh. wants to Carter, Wonder Woman. She was in one of the newer Wonder Woman movies too, wasn't she? she in the was, sequel, that yeah. was really cool. I I could totally see that. One. Yeah, I could totally. See that's that. a good choice. <laughs> oh, and Joe says thank you for doing this. Ooh. Super fun. This episode. Read was. it in Yoda voice. Super fun. This episode was. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You're welcome. That first one's free. I'll have to charge you all for the next one. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. And hopefully you had um, maybe still found some fun things to read. Oh, J oh, of course. Ryan Reynolds. I mean, who wouldn't want me? Look, I could see Ryan Reynolds playing you. That's like the <laughs> nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kind, all right thanks kind. for being here Anne, and thanks to all of you hopefully you had fun yeah and um you should definitely come back next week it's going to be our book club episode oh and yeah. we're going to be talking about um madhouse at the ends of the earth and i'm totally spacing out on who wrote it uh but it's called madhouse at the end of the earth it's so. about the belgica the ship yeah. arctic expedition it's i'm almost done it's really good arctic expedition so it's, we're going to be talking about that talking about the story. arctic mm -hmm. so it'll be a nice cold story on a hot day so <laughs> thanks again see you then and we'll see you all next week bye bye, -bye.